story of his trial now, which shocked the world. This film does include some harrowing scenes. This footage was smuggled out of Nigeria at great personal risk. When I was running, one When I was running, at a secret location and in fear of their lives, these Ogoni activists are listening to the last message made by their executed leader, Ken Saro Wiwa. The Nigerian military dictatorship saw Sarawiwa's ideas as a threat and set up a show trial to silence his campaign. This film includes footage of the trial which was shot by the Nigerian military. It has never been shown before. Despite worldwide appeals for clemency, on November the 10th, 1995, Ken Saruwiwa and eight other Agonis were taken to Port Harcourt prison and hanged by the neck. They thought that they just had to eliminate him. They felt he was the person who actually must have been the power behind the whole revolution. Ken Saruwiwa became famous in Nigeria as writer and director of the sitcom Bazi and Company, which ran for 150 episodes. Its popularity stemmed from an accurate portrayal of corruption in Nigerian society. Kenule Bison Saruwiwa was the son of a trader who at 92 still runs the family business. After a short period in local government, he left to concentrate on writing and publishing. Most of his books were set in his oil-rich homeland of Agoni. Despair. He cursed the earth for spouting oil, black gold they called it, and he cursed the gods for not drying the oil wells. What did it matter that millions of barrels of oil were mined and exported daily so long as this poor woman wept those tears of despair, what could he look into later? Could he make alternate land available? And would the lawmakers revise the laws just to bring a bit more happiness to these unhappy wretches whom the search for oil had reduced to an animal existence? They ought to send the oil royalties to the men whose farms and land were despoiled and ruined, but the lawyers were in the pay of the oil companies and the government people in the pay of the lawyers and the companies. So how could he look into it later? He should have told the woman to despair, to die, not to live in death. That would have been more honest and respectable. Since independence from Britain, a succession of Nigerian dictators have been sustained by oil, half of which is produced by Shell. This oil accounts for 14% of Shell's global profits and provides the military regime with $11 million a day. Shell started to extract oil from Agoni in 1958. Suppressed and impoverished by despots and severely affected by oil pollution, Agoni is a small, densely populated area on the Niger Delta. The Agoni people had felt powerless to defend their farmland until 1990. In Ogoni, we had the leadership and the person of Ken who motivated the people. We had the organization like Mossop that was 
the first of its kind in that part of the world, in, in grassroots democracy, in trying to mobilize all segments of the people. The movement for the survival of Ogoni people, known as Mossop, was formed to campaign for ethnic minority rights and an end to 35 years of oil pollution. By 1993, Sarawiwa had become president. We are going to demand our rights peacefully, non-violently, and we shall win. In that year, 300,000 people took part in peaceful marches on their cultural festival known as Agoni Day. Agoni Day in 1993 was the most uh, exhilarating experience for me. It was wonderful to see a people who had uh, been docile for so long, fear, uh, no longer a part of them. And on that day, when I saw the large number of people streaming into Bori from their various villages, I really felt a sense of fulfillment. I, if I had died the day after that, I would have died a very happy man indeed. From today onwards, Shell is declared persona non grata in Ogoni. For the first time, peaceful protest forced Shell out of the area. A tiny ethnic group had defied the largest army in Africa and one of the biggest companies in the world. Both Shell and the Nigerian dictatorship had been surprised by the effectiveness of Mossop whose revolutionary ideas could spread and threaten oil operations elsewhere on the Delta. Shell do admit that there have been environmental problems, but state that Mossop's claims of devastation are exaggerated, and they say they are updating their operations in line with current industry standards. But the following minutes of a Shell meeting, held in February 1993, reveal their acute embarrassment at Sarawiwa's campaigning. Having also become a thorn in the government side, Sarawiwa started to experience harassment and detentions. In July 1993, the government began the violent suppression of the Mossop campaign. Major Paul Okuntimo was head of military operations in the area. The MG with 500 rounds will open up. When four or five like that open up, and then we are throwing the lake into the boot, and it's making poor. What do you think the, the, the and the lamb around, what do you think the people are going to do? And we have already put roadblock on the main road. We don't want anybody to start running. So the option we made was that we should drive all these boys, all these people into the bush. Ogoni was surrounded, villages were blocked in by military checkpoints and attacked, over 800 people were slaughtered. This footage was filmed by Ogoni people a few hours after the raiders had left. 